Welcome, folks. Welcome to Winning on Wednesday. My name is Juan Vitas, and I'm the founder of Winning on Wednesday. Winning on Wednesday is a, is a place we meet uh, to network. I always say people do business who they know, like, and trust, and you can always join us at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every week. We've been doing this for five years, and we get to meet new friends and speaking of new friends and new WOW member, we have officially WOW, new WOW member. Thank you so much. I'd like to uh, introduce Nancy Levy. How are you doing, Nancy? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, my name is Nancy Levy, and my business is Video Journals Online. And what this does is help people capture and preserve their memories, their life story, via a Zoom interview. It's usually a one-hour or two-hour interview um, where I act as the railroad track and keep them talking about what they knew about their grandparents and their parents and their childhood and their value system and their education and and then eventually how they'd like to be remembered. And that's put, uh, that's edited, can add photos to it. It's put in the cloud and they get a link and they can then share it with all their friends and families and they can download the video to their computer. Excellent. We'll definitely talk more about that later. Um, I wanted to ask you where, so where, take us where, where did it all begin? Where did it all start? Where were you born and where were you raised? Yeah, I'm a Philly girl. Okay. So I was raised in Philadelphia, but I left to go to Duquesne University in Pittsburgh at 17. Then after that, I was offered a graduate teaching assistantship and free education. So I went to graduate school at West Virginia University, where I discovered I am not a mountain girl. I am a city girl. So from there, I went to um, Manhattan. Best place to live when you're in your 20s and you're single. And it was a lot of fun. And then I had a job offer in Atlanta. And then my ex-husband had a job offer in Miami. And we came here expecting to be here about two years. And it's been 38. Wow. So take us back. When you were a kid, did you have, what did you have any aspirations to be? Did you like any idea? Because like, I mean, I wanted to become a veterinarian, a doctor. But then when I found out with too much studying, it kind of got turned off by that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a long road. Um, no, I wanted to be a psychologist. Oh. And uh, that changed when I went to Duquesne because um, their psychology program was not a traditional one. And I didn't like the direction that was going in. So instead, I went into sociology. Like, what did I think I was going to do with a sociology degree? But my graduate school program was very um, applied social research. It was very computer oriented, big data sets. And so I did my first computer programming on key punch cards. Oh, wow. <laughs> take it as back, you take it as back. And and I know that if you had to make an error, you had to redo the whole redo thing. The, whole, the thing. whole thing, yeah. I, I wasn't privy to that, but I, my, my professors, with, you know, who were in the business used to tell me about the punch card. I actually got to see a punch card for my first time. You know, I was like, wow, it was kind of cool. That's Young a, that's people. a Younger people today don't know what a key punch card looks like. The struggle is real, was real. <laughs> Back then, the struggle was real. Wow, it's, it's really amazing. I, I didn't know that about you. That's, that's wow. That's, you, wow, you wowed me. <laughs> it's, see, this is the beauty about these interviews is they really discover about what we don't know about you. And I always tell people, if I don't know what you do, I can't recommend you, right? And it's always right. that thing. Uh, what about role models or anybody that inspired you? Did you have any role models when you were growing up or anybody inspire you to today or anybody? Yeah, I think, um, you know, given the field that I'm in now, Barbara Walters, Oprah Winfrey, you know, I wish I was Oprah Winfrey. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> but yeah, I thought they they really engaged um, the people they talked to and, and were able to get deep into their experiences. And there were women, pioneer, you know, women, so, women yeah, because that, that era it's, was hard to break into, but these women are, were pioneers for that era. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And very successful at it. Exactly. Um, so tell us about your first job experience. How was that like? And, 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 and tell us the journey of, of what you went from your first job into what you're doing now. So my first job, again, I was in New York City and I got a job with the American Health Foundation and they were doing educational health research 
um, of three school districts in the suburbs of New York, up in Westchester. And so I was doing, creating their questionnaires. I was analyzing the data and um, helping with publications. And then I realized that nonprofit means nonprofit for all. And it's very hard living in Manhattan uh, with a very low salary. So what I did was I took that knowledge that I had and transferred it to marketing research, even though I had never had a marketing course in my life. And so for most of my life in and out was marketing research and then transferred over to marketing. Oh, wow. And, um, and, and, and you're doing that now. So exactly what you put with your, what you're doing. Well, uh, before video journals online, I had a digital marketing agency for 12 years. Oh, wow. And I, then I got tired of it and I thought I want to do something else and I don't want to retire. So what is it going to be? Wow, twelve years of digital marketing. I mean, I, I, I and how was that experience like to you? I mean, I know this. Yeah. How was that it like? Was, it it was fun in the beginning because I was, you know, uh, doing websites and doing social media and doing email. But towards the end, you know, the best thing you can do is have reoccurring revenue. Yes. So therefore, I was mostly doing Google ad campaigns and Facebook ad campaigns, where I was being paid a monthly um, retainer. And, but the, the, um, the algorithms change all the time. So I was constantly, you know, on webinars on YouTube and that sort of thing to, to keep up with the changes. It was challenging. No, I, I could understand that, especially now with AI and everything, it's, it could be yeah. very overwhelming. I, I get it. I mean, I, 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 that's how I felt when AI first came out and I was like, uh, okay, but you know, the, the, the interesting about AI is that. I didn't realize I was using AI before AI was out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, that, so for me, it made me more comfortable. I'll, I'll give you a case in point. Uh, example of AI was Grammarly. Well, Grammarly had a lot of uh, AI built in, you know, already. And they were using it. And I was like, wow. So I was kind of familiar with, uh, with the AI, using a little bit of AI. And then when ChatGPT came out, it was just, and with me, just like anything else, like playing with it, it's just, I like, you know, tinkering with stuff, so. It, it we're we're going to see a lot of changes in our oh. life with AI coming on board. And I don't know that we're prepared for it, but we've seen a lot of changes in our lifetime. So the whole computer revolution and all of that. Um, well, it's it's funny you're talking about that. And, and I'm, I'm glad that you could talk about this and I can share this with you because somebody who has done punch you know, cards, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, they say how how with AI, it's going to expedite things more quickly, solve things more quickly in the medical field, research. Um, so those are the positive things that are going to come out, you know, uh, to do more things in that aspect. So in the medical research, it's going to be more, you know, cures and all this stuff, things that us, we couldn't find a solve or could, our computers right now couldn't solve, AI will do that for us. I know. I envision a day getting an x-ray and saying to the person, don't you dare let a human do this. I want a machine to do, to read it. Um, yeah. Because because they'll be exposed to so many more. But I'm already mm. using AI in video editing. I don't know if you're familiar with Descript. Yes. There's so a, many out there. So I'm many out there. Yes. It, the script, there's Opus. There's uh, yeah. so many out there. There's, uh, well... Uh, to to your point, when I used to do these video edits, go with, with this. I used to take me about two to three days to do it because I used to, I had a uh, video editor on my phone, so I used to do a video. It was Kinmaster, and um, it, it wasn't as robust. But now I use CapCut and others, you know, uh, Canva, all these other integrated tools that made it much easier. So the two to three days of editing now is two to three hours. It's incredible. Yeah, by the. We'll have this interview tonight. I'll post it up tonight. <laughs> That's the beauty of AI. It just you know they we we are able to expedite things much quickly. So, in that sense, yes, there's going to be a lot of innovations, a lot of good things. Uh, we have to just think for the positive. I feel that it's going to be good things. You know, we're going to solve a lot of things. New materials, new uh, uh, things are going to be discovered. Uh, you know, uh, better, uh, you know, lighter materials, more stronger materials, and, and that's going to be resolved with AI. So it's going to be an Definitely. interesting. Definitely. Uh, 
you know, at this point, I like to call the golden nugget moment. And um, if there's any uh, piece of information that you've learned from your business or your, your journey uh, that you want to help somebody better their careers or be a better business person, is there any valuable information you want to leave behind with us or give us some examples? Yes. During my career, I've taught entrepreneurship to many wannabe entrepreneurs. And after a while, you sort of get a feel. You may think, this person's idea is not great, but this person is going to make it because they have that confidence and they have that perseverance and they have the bravery, which is all necessary. But the thing that I tell people who want to start the entrepreneurship journey is you need to finance your runway. You need to have a large enough runway in order to get the business because Nobody makes a profit the day after they start a business. I mean, you need to have time and it would be horrible to think that you ran out of money and had to close your business two weeks before it became, before it took off. But if you don't have enough runway, that's what's going to happen. Wow. That's, that's true. It's so amazing about that. And you need to set a, you know, uh, yes, you need to set a platform, uh, a stage and build it. And a lot of people don't realize that it takes a lot of hard work to do that. Um, not going into politics, but you know, I, I ran for office and I know that um, you people didn't know who you are. And when you sell yourself, it's hard, you know, enough, but you got to sell service and products. That's even hard because you're competing with everybody else. So you really have to start that campaign. And it really takes one person at a time and takes a lot of work. It's like almost like knocking on doors, really, like being a salesperson and knocking on doors. You know, people don't do that anymore. They don't knock on doors. Remember in the 50s and 60s, it's yeah. to sell vacuums and stuff like that. And you become a good salesperson, believe it or not, by your experience, you know, doing those. Yes, um, definitely. When I had my digital marketing agency, I'd wake up at two o'clock in the morning wondering, how am I going to make this client more money? Now I wake up at two o'clock in the morning going, how are you going to make Nancy Levy more money? <laughs> that's right. Awesome. That's excellent. That's excellent. Um, no, that, that's all. Wow. And uh, what about, um, do you belong to any networking groups or organizations or communities or spheres of influences? Besides wow, obviously. Thank you. Thank you right, for wow. Right, right. I, I do. I've been doing a lot of networking these days. So uh, free networking organization is in this together roundtable um meets every week and alignable is you know they have networking things going on all the time in person have, right yeah no oh no in person okay online. online um and then i have two groups that are specifically obviously my target audience are seniors so i like to network with other people who have the same target audience mm -hmm. um and so I belong to the Broward Coalition on Aging and uh, the Geriatric Advisory Council. And all of their members are geared towards seniors. See, this is the beauty about getting to know each other. Um, so I am I have been working with the city of Glen Cove um, with the, uh, their website and doing their marketing and strategy campaign. I'm going on our fourth year is the off the office of aging so i've been working with them for four years now so uh and, and a shout out to uh carol Waldman, who's a friend of mine who's, who was the former senior director for the senior center for 30 years uh and and she does geric studies at the at the hostra as well so she's a phenomenal person so that's somebody i could definitely connect you with but they, i'm thinking see, that so so this is exactly a wow moment so people can see the beauty about communicating with another and we're doing this live in an interview so, so people can see the how the magic works and wow i always see you see the o is for opportunity and the light bulb and the lightning bulb and the w's by the way are magnets if you turn them upside down they're magnets so that attracts attention but this is a perfect example of how wow works you spark up ideas by just getting to know by doing these one-to-ones by doing these interviews and i'm like wow we're definitely going to talk offline. I'm going to definitely connect you to Carol. This Thank is going to be amazing. And I, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm really, I'm jazzed up. You jazzed me up, man. You, you, you wow me today, Nancy Levy. You <laughs> wow me today. You, you, it, it, it's hard to wow pe me, but you, you did it. You did it. <laughs> Thank uh, you. All right. Uh, Nancy, what's the best way to people to contact you? Um, 
I would say uh, email nancy at uh, videojournalsonline.com. Okay. And my cell phone is 954-562-5951. And okay. LinkedIn. I mean, exactly. I always like to connect on LinkedIn and set up and one-on-ones. Exactly. And tell us tell us about the, the service now, because this is really important. And, and, and I did this on purpose because I, I want you to give them this, this information twice because people I want you to, people to know about the survey because what you do is remarkable. I've seen your work. It's phenomenal. So tell us a little bit about Video Journal. Yes. Well, the interesting thing about Video Journals Online is that I did the same thing 25 years ago. I had a little studio here in South Florida and people would come in and I would interview them. Now, in, in those days, it was VHS tapes. Um, and editing the video was a lot more complicated. But um, I knew from having done focus groups and that sort of thing, that shortly after you start talking, if you're really engaged, people forget about a video camera. you know. And so I heard incredible stories. I got so much um, positive feedback. I had a woman call me and she said, you don't know me. But you my, you did my grandmother's video journal, and I was just at her celebration of life, and I did the eulogy, and I told them everything about my grandmother's life, and everybody came up to me afterwards and said, how did you know so much about your grandmother's life? And she said, I had to call you and tell you it was because of you. Wow. So that is, that's the crux of it. Make sure you get those memories recorded. Don't put it off. Procrastination in this is, is terrible. Um, I had someone, a client say, <clears throat> don't you think I'm too young to do this? I'm 77 years old. I, she said, my, my parents both lived in their late 90s. I said, well, if you live to your late 90s, we'll do another chapter. But better to get it done now because we don't know what the future will hold. And I can guarantee what will happen? It will save regret because after you're gone, your family, when you can no longer pick up the phone and answer their question, their, your family will say, why didn't I write that down? Why didn't I write down her stories? Why didn't I capture her voice? I've heard too many people tell me they're holding on to the last voicemail of their mother because it's the last way for them to listen to their voice. This is a very important thing to do it is only takes two hours of your time. I'm not going to ask you a question you don't know the answer to because it's about your life. And we can always edit things out. So it's really a wonderful family keepsake for those you know and love and for generations yet to come. And, and more importantly, you're leaving a legacy behind for your family. This is a legacy that you can share with your great grandkids, grandkids and this is what family lineage. I mean, right now you think of Ancestry.com, right? You go and check. You, I did a DNA. You can see all these people that. But it's nice to have a video uh, legacy behind a footprint, a digital footprint. I always say, you know, that you need to leave this behind. And uh, this is great. That what you're doing is phenomenal. And thank you. I think I think you're doing God's work, by the way, because you're leaving. You know, you you sharing love and the compassion and leaving this behind for people to share for a lifetime, you know, and stories are amazing. I think people's stories need to be heard. And there's a lot of great stories that don't get heard. That's true. And it is, it's a form of my purpose to anybody, any one person that I can do this for. I am imp impacting hundreds of people in their family many, many years from now who I will never meet, but it's, it's like a gift. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Nancy Levy. Can you tell us one more time what's the best way to reach you? Uh, email me at nancy at videojournalsonline.com. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nancy. This has been wonderful. And uh, if you want to be a, a guest of Winning on Wednesday, simply go to our website, winningonwednesday.com, and sign up as a first-time guest. And thank you again. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you.